imagine we surveyed a group of adults, and we asked them how old they were, and these were their ages. Then we reordered them so that the youngest person was on the left, and the oldest person was on the right. You can see the youngest person in this list is 23 years, and the oldest one is 59 years. Which person would be the median? The median is the age of the person that's in the middle. You probably already know how to find the median value by removing the least and greatest value in pairs, like this, until we're left with the person that's in the middle. And this person's age would be the median age of 36 years. This method of finding the middle value is really easy to understand, but sometimes it's not the most practical. Let's bring everybody back in. If you counted up everybody in this list, you'd see that there were 23 people. Let's assign a position to everybody in the line. So the person on the left is in the first position, the next person's in the second position, and then we carry on third, fourth, and so on, until we hit the median. For this line, you can see the median person is in the 12th position. And if we continue to label all of the people, it goes all the way up to the 23rd position. You could think of the person in the median position as being at the midpoint of the first position and the last position. To find the midpoint of two numbers, you add them together and divide it by two. So if we want the midpoint of the first and the 23rd position, we can add together first and 23rd, and then divide this by two. 1 plus 23 is 24, and half of 24 is 12. So this tells us that the midpoint of the first and the 23rd position is the 12th position. This is a much faster way of locating the median position, especially if you have a large set of data. Now let's imagine that we took a line of length n. So we could have the first five people, which would be numbered 1 to 5, and then we keep going on and on and on until we get to the last person, which in this line will be the nth person. So there are n people in this line. For a line that has n people in it, the median position would be the midpoint of the first and last person. So the first person's in position 1, the last person's in position n, and we can add these together and divide it by 2 to find the position of the median person. Now normally we write this formula the other way around, we like to write n plus 1 over 2. So for example, if you had a really long line here like this one, there are 59 people in this line. To find the position of the median person, you would take 59, add 1 to this, and then divide this by 2. This would give you 60, divide by 2, which is 30. So the middle person's in the 30th position, as this person here. Now let's return to that list of adults from earlier. To locate the median person, we do n plus 1 divided by 2, which was the 12th person, this person here was the median. Now there are some other people in this line that we're often interested in. If the median person is halfway through the line, what about the person that's one quarter of the way through the line? So instead of doing n plus 1 divided by 2, we would do n plus 1 divided by 4. For this example, n is 23 since there are 23 people in the line, so we do 23 plus 1, divide this by 4, and we end up with 6. So the sixth person is one quarter of the way through the line. That's this person here. The name we assign to this is the lower quartile. So to find the lower quartile's position, we do n plus 1 divided by 4. Now since there's a lower quartile, there's also an upper quartile. The upper quartile is three quarters of the way through the data. To find the position of the upper quartile, we multiply the position of the lower quartile by three. So the lower quartile's position was n plus one over four, and we multiply this by three. So for this line with 23 people, we would do three lots of 23 plus one divided by four. 23 plus one is 24, divide that by four is six, and multiply that by three gives you 18. So the person in the 18th position will be the upper quartile, that's this person here. Let's have a look at what an exam question may look like on this topic. So for this question, we have 19 students who were asked how many hours of revision they did for their mock exams, and these were the numbers here. First of all, we're going to try and work out the median number of hours. To do all of these questions, I'm going to rewrite the numbers in order from lowest to greatest. So we'll start with the lowest one. I can see there are two zeros. There's a one and a two. There's two threes. There's a four. There's three fives. Two sixes. 7 and an 8, there's two 9s, and then we have a 10 and a 12 and a 16. So to locate the median person, I'm going to do the number of students, which was 19. I add 1 to this and divide it by 2. This tells me the median number of hours is in the 10th position. So I just count along from the left hand side until I find the 10th number, which is this one here. So the answer to the median is 5 hours. Next, we're going to work out the lower quartile. This time I do 19 plus 1, but I divide it by 4 instead. 19 plus 1 is 20, divide by 4 is 5. So I'm after the fifth value. If you count along five values from the left hand side, you end up at this 3. 
So the lower quartile is three hours. And now we'll do the upper quartile. For this one, we do three lots of 19 plus one over four. Well, we did 19 plus one over four in the previous part, that was five. So we multiply this by three to get 15. So we want the 15th number. If you count the 15th number from the left-hand side, you end up at this number here, which is nine. So the answer to the upper quartile is nine hours. You may have noticed that if the lower quartile was the fifth value from the left-hand side, the upper quartile will be the fifth value in from the right-hand side. That may be a faster way of finding the upper quartile. Finally, you may be asked to work out something called the interquartile range. To work out the interquartile range, you do the upper quartile, subtract the lower quartile. We have both of those values from the previous parts, so the upper quartile is 9, and the lower quartile is 3. So to find the interquartile range, which I've abbreviated to IQR, you would do the upper quartile 9, subtract the lower quartile 3, and 9 take 3 is 6. So the interquartile range is 6 hours. Now let's return once again to our list of adults. We've already identified the lower quartile, which is 29 years, the median, which is 36 years, and the upper quartile at 42 years. Two other notable values are the youngest person, so the lowest value, which is 23 years, and also the oldest person, so the greatest value, which is 59 years. If you have all five of these bits of data, you can draw something called a box plot. To draw a box plot, you need a scale, and this one I'm going to label as years, since this is the ages of people. To draw a box plot, you draw a vertical line at each of those values. So we're going to draw one at 23 for the lowest value, one at 29 for the lower quartile, one at 36 for the median, 42 for the upper quartile, and 59 for the largest value. To complete this box plot, we're going to connect up the lower quartile to the upper quartile. So we draw some lines that go from the lower quartile through the median to the upper quartile, and this forms the box, which is why it's called a box plot. We then connect up the lowest value to the left-hand side of the box like this, and then we connect the right hand side of the box up to the greatest value like this. And this is a completed box plot. Box plots are a nice way of visualizing sets of data. Sometimes in an exam, you'll be given a box plot and asked some questions about it. So for instance, this box plot, which is about the mass of some apples, we could be asked to write down the median mass. Well, the median mass is the line that was in the middle of the box, that's this one here. So we just read off where that value is on the scale. If you go down, you can see that this is at 94, so the median mass is 94 grams. You could also be asked about the quartiles. You could even be asked to work out the interquartile range. Remember from earlier, the interquartile range was the upper quartile, subtract the lower quartile. You can see the upper and lower quartiles because they're the ends of the box. The upper quartile is this value here, and the lower quartile is this value here. So if we extend those lines down and have a look, you can see that the upper quartile is 102, and the lower quartile, if you extend that down, is 80. So we do 102 take away 80, which is 22 grams. You may even be asked to work out the range of the masses. The range is the greatest value, subtract the lowest value. So the greatest one is this value right at the end of the box plot here, and the lowest value is the one at the other end, this one here. So if we do the greatest, take away the lowest, we do 118, subtract the lowest value, which is 20, and this gives you 98 grams. You could also be asked a question like this. What percentage of the apples had a mass greater than 80 grams? So if you look at 80 grams on the axis and go up, we're interested in all of the apples that have a mass greater than 80 grams. At first glance, it may appear as though there are lots of apples to the left of this line and not many to the right. However, that's not actually the case. If we imagine that this rectangle here represents the masses of all of the apples. If we split it into four equal sections like this, then the value on the left is the lowest, and we know that's 20 grams. The value on the right is the greatest. We can read that off at 118 grams. And this one here is the median, the one in the middle, that's 94 grams. And then we have the lower quartile at one quarter of the way through, that's 80 grams. And the upper quartile up here at 102 grams. Now, because we split this bar into four equal parts, there are 25% of the apples in each of these sections here. In the question, we've been asked for the percentage of apples that have a mass greater than 80 grams. So that's all of the apples that are greater than the lower quartile. You can see from this diagram that 25% of those apples are below the lower quartile, but actually three lots of 25 are above, which is 75%. So it doesn't really matter how this diagram looks, the percentage of apples that are above the lower quartile is always going to be 75%, and the percentage below the lower quartile will always be 25%. So the answer to this question is just 75%. Let's try one more like this. There are 800 apples represented in the box plot. How many are between 80 and 102 grams? So we're trying to work out how many of the apples are between 80, which is here, and 102, which is here. 
This is actually just the lower and upper quartile. If we bring back the diagram from before, you can see the percentage of apples that's between the lower quartile and the upper quartile is 2 lots of 25, which is 50. The question says there are 800 apples in total, so we want 50% of this, and 50% of that is half of it, which is 400 apples. Sometimes exam questions have more than one box plot, and you may need to make some comparisons. A typical question might say, compare the distributions of heights for year 11 and year 7. When we make comparisons between box plots, we're usually looking for two values. They would be the median and the interquartile range. So let's create a little table, and for year 11 and year 7, we're going to work out the median value and the interquartile range. So we can identify the median by finding the line that's in the middle of the box, so for year 11 it's this one here, and that corresponds to a height of 167 centimeters, and for the year 7s it's this line here, which is 155 centimeters. Now we need to work out the interquartile ranges, which is the difference between the upper and lower quartile. Let's do year 11 first. So for year 11 the upper quartile is this value, and the lower quartile is this value. They are 181 and 159. If you do 181, take away 159, you get 22 centimeters. Now let's do year 7. So for year 7, the upper quartile is this value here, and the lower quartile is this value here. The upper quartile is 159, and the lower quartile 145. 159 take away 145 gives you 14 centimeters. Now that we have this information, we're able to make some comparisons. The first comparison we're going to make is about the median. We're going to start by making a statement. So I'm just going to say which one has the higher median. So you might say something like, the year 11 students have a higher median, you can see they've got 167 compared to 155. This is just a statement. In order to get the marks for this question, we need to interpret that in context. So what does that actually mean in the context of this question? You can see this question's about the heights of those students, so we're going to need to mention heights in our answer. So we could say, this means that they are taller on average. The fact that we use the word taller in this sentence indicates that we've interpreted that in context. It tells the person reading that this is about heights. It's also really important that you use the phrase on average when comparing the medians. Whilst the average year 11 student is taller than the average year 7 one, it doesn't mean that all year 11 students are taller than all year 7 students. Now I'm going to compare the interquartile ranges. I'm going to begin again just by making a simple statement about which one is higher. So I could write down the year 11 students have a higher interquartile range. So there's my statement. Now I'm going to interpret this statement in context. What does it mean if you have a higher interquartile range? Well, if your interquartile range is higher, it means there's a greater spread of data. The best way to write this down is to say that the year 11 heights were less consistent. You can see once again that I've mentioned heights, this means I've interpreted it in the context of the question. The phrase less consistent is important to secure the marks for this question. There are some other phrases that are accepted by exam boards, for instance you may say that the heights were more varied. I always use the word consistent though, because it's the one that the exam boards often use in questions themselves, in particular if you do AQA maths. Now both of these comments could also have been written the other way around, so if we did them from the point of view of the year 7 students. For the median we could have said, the year 7 students had a lower median. This meant that they were shorter on average. We could have also said the year 7 students had a lower interquartile range, this meant that their heights were more consistent. For the final thing you need to understand about box plots and quartiles is you may be able to draw a box plot using another diagram. This could be a cumulative frequency diagram, a histogram, and if you do Ed Excel, a stem and leaf diagram. For this example I'm going to do a cumulative frequency diagram. So we may be given a cumulative frequency diagram like this, and told some information. So 160 year 11 students did a maths test, the lowest test score was 6%, and the highest test score was 98%, well done to that person. And we might be asked to draw a box plot for the test scores. So we'll need a scale for the box plot of test scores, and we need to identify those 5 key points, the lowest, the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, and the highest value. Now you can see we were given 2 of them in the question, the lowest test score was 6%, and the highest test score was 98%. So we can draw a vertical line at 6% and also a vertical line at 98%. To find the other three values, we're going to need to use the cumulative frequency diagram. The cumulative frequency goes up to 160. So the person that's in the middle will be the 80th person. So if I go across from 80 and then down, I can see their test score was about 65. So if I continue this down and draw a vertical line at 65, that's the median. Next, we want to find the lower quartile. 
If you do 160 divided by 4, you get 40. So the 40th person here will have the lower quartile test score. If we continue that down, we can draw a vertical line here at the lower quartile, which looks like is about 52. Then onto the upper quartile. So if the lower quartile was the 40th person, multiply this by 3, that's the 120th person. Go across and down and read off this value here, and that one's at about 74. And now we're ready to connect this up to a box plot, join the lower quartile through the median to the upper quartile, and then connect up the boxes to the greatest and least value, and there's your finished box plot. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and go and try out the exam questions I've linked in this video's description.